I changed it, I moved it up to crush, crush the. So not only did I kind of lay an emphasis on the words verbally, on the word that specifically, verbally, I also um, emphasized it a little bit by moving it up a note or two. And that also worked to change kind of the impression of how the entire line was sung. So this, I said in um, the next lesson, I would discuss a little bit the music. Can I come up with some of the music ideas um, for background on these songs? And um, And I was thinking about it, and as I said, I'm, I'm actually going to give a little history on the background of this song, specifically because it led to another song that became very popularly known. And um, and the randomness of that, of the fact that I am now again talking about the same song, is something that has a little bit of a history background that I will get into. But first. Um, one of the things that I said in one of the lessons and that I had said in the past when I talked about the same thing was that I thought it was sort of a uh, piano kind of a song, maybe violin wouldn't be suitable. And I was thinking about it and I actually do think that, um, that possibly I think violin would be a nice instrument to for this song. And so I was thinking about that and um, actually thinking of a violin for uh, the intro as a predominant instrument for the introduction of um, the song. And it was just going to be, of course, instrumental first and then lyrics. So I was coming up with some different ideas for that and thinking of how, you know, the violin sounds and then thinking of the melody that I would imagine a violin playing that would work with, um, that would work, I guess, you know, um, and thinking of how a violin would sound along with my melody is very different from thinking about how a piano would sound, it's because pianos have, um, have chords and, um, can play sort of melody and harmony at the same time. Violins are singular a little more, and you know, they're, you're not, well, you're playing some, some kinds of mixes, but not really so much like the, like a piano. And so working with that idea of, you know, what kind of tune do I want with a violin to have it sound suitable and not too melodramatic or over the top, but, um, but you know what would sound nice? I um, started thinking of a couple of ideas, and one of is of them is the, um, the tune I started humming right before getting on this, and now I think I've forgotten it because it was just not practiced, and immediately before I decided to play this and start talking. And um, but I am going to focus myself for a moment and see if I can recall that in a an approximate. Um, <laughs> melody, okay.
Um, and that's the lock key I'm not thinking on the very end of that uh, line. But what I just briefly did, and it was actually slightly different from what I was thinking, but it was close, um, is I began to think of the melody. And I specifically was thinking of the violin and how that would play. And I um, imagine it as longer drum um, notes. And, uh, of course, there could be instruments in the background supporting that. But it's a little bit of an intro. And actually, the intro could be longer than that because that's a very short intro. And I sort of imagine a slightly longer intro, intro to um, the song rather than just a few bars or notes and then um, immediately singing. But that is one of the first steps in thinking of where I'm placing some of these melodies and where the lyrics uh, have the pause and instruments come in in that section. And then where, you know, where the bridge is and the chorus and all of that. And, you know, what's playing at the same time with the um, with musical instruments. So it's obviously kind of hard to demonstrate when I'm not playing that, but I still am able to base um, my understanding of how things sound on ideas of, of how I would put things together. And um, and I think there could be some slightly, uh, it could be a, a romantic kind of melody, but I also think there could be some sort of eclectic element to this. Because as the words come about, it sort of starts turning into a song that almost sounds like a song that a runaway um, teenager or youth could really relate to. And there are a lot of runaways. And not just refugees and people trying to find a safe place and people who can relate to like having to move or go to another direction for whatever reason. There are a lot of kids that, um, that have run away in the past or think about running away or, you know, maybe they should be running away. <laughs> yeah. That is sad to say because, you know, nobody wants to uh, deal with a bunch of runaway teens. <laughs> and uh, encourage that. But there are some situations that are so horrible for a kid. Um, it's like being in a refugee situation where they're almost in a country where they can't get away and something really bad is happening. And, you know, they need to go someplace. So refugees and runaway teens have that in common. And often as a society or their family, you know, of course they were friends or some other unknown factor could not could possibly not have anything to do with their family at all. That might prompt someone to run. But um but when I think of that in that context and I think of who this audience is, that's when I also start thinking of a little bit of an eclectic or somewhat alternative kind of sound to this song, as well as a romantic, classical kind of composition. And, um, and as for the song itself, I pretty much sang it again this morning this, the same way that I sang it last time, and um, went through it. The, the second verse, I have not been singing to match um, melodically and in the meter the first verse and often with songs that um, you know that are structured and formalized the first verse and the second verse are going to have the same amount of meter in, in them and they are going to have the same melody and in my song that I sang the first time the second verse is a second verse but it has a shorter um, shorter meter, a shorter um, amount of 
total lines because there are approximately three instead of four. And it also has, I was singing it slightly differently, not exactly the same melodically as the first verse. Which I think sometimes is, is nice. Personally, I like having some songs that are not necessarily exact. I like going out of the um, framework a little bit. And, you know, having a, a similar chorus to bring everything back to, that kind of ties things in all its own, on its own. But in a um, quote-unquote commercial sense, or in a regular song style sense that people are familiar with and, and comfortable with and can feel like a, it's more of a singable song, they tend to like the verses to to stay the same, the chorus to, to be the same with a hook, you know, a good... A good um, melody and lyrics that are going to um, make people want to sing it or hear it again and then the bridge you know for a little diversity so um, so anyway I sang it through adding um, dragging out the words a little to make it a, the same meter and I um, And that's pretty much what I worked on. So basically I'm thinking of the, uh, I came up with some, some idea for the instruments, some idea for the, for the music, and a little more of a, an idea of who the audience is. So I think next time I will put that all together and sing that for you and Either before the next lesson, lesson seven, or after the next lesson, I will give some more history on this background, on the um, background of the song. And uh, this song, actually, as I was singing it in, in the last lesson, I explained sometimes you don't want to just nail something down and put it into concrete. You want to let it develop and sing with emotion and see what comes from that. And when I did that as a preteen on the exact same idea, uh, another song developed from that and I, I had it it came about as a response to this so I had sort of a an a, um, idea of one person singing this song and then another person responding um, with this other song back to this person and sort of then also a duet where they um, answer back and forth in the, in the second song and that song that I'm referring to is one that was featured on the movie Bodyguard and um, it's called I Will Always Love You and it was performed by Whitney Houston and I, I am actually the author of that song and I wrote it when I was a preteen and it came up right after this one that I'm talking about now and this idea I'm working on that and I can explain some of the thought process that went into that song as well and that's something that I might do next. Um, instead of going to a brand new song and starting something over, I might at least take one lesson and explain how I developed that other song that became so popularly known. And uh, also, on that second song, there is a, um, if you hear uh, re regarding music and where I wanted things placed in, in my music, um, with I Will Always Love You, you can hear it at one point of the um, of the song, and you know, it, it's very flowing and um, dragged out everywhere, you know, and I will always love you, that kind of thing, and all of a sudden it stops and there's a pause, and then you hear this boom, and just silence, and then boom, and then and I will always love you right after that and that was actually um, my idea an idea I had that went with I had thought at the time either that song or my first song because the idea first occurred to me in this other in this song that I'm talking about now because it's talking about run you know run, run. 
and I thought of the sound of a um, like a, the Olympics or running 